So here we are this Lent, going through the events of Holy Week, giving ourselves a little bit more time than usual to think about the things that Jesus did and taught during that last week before his death. And today we find Jesus in the temple. And this is not Jesus meek and mild, but Jesus very angry about something. Angry enough to physically turn over the tables and drive away the money changers and the dove sellers. So who were these people and what were they doing to make Jesus so angry? Well, in some ways, you might say these people were providing a necessary service. Because all Jewish men were required to pay an annual temple tax of half a shekel, but they could only pay this tax with the correct coin, a Jewish half shekel. So if they had a shekel, that would need to be changed, or if they had other currency, they would need to change their money before they could pay their tax. And of course, for this service, the money changers charged a fee. Likewise, the law required people to make all sorts of sacrifices and offerings at the temple, part of being made ritually clean. For example, doves were used as offerings when women came to be cleansed after childbirth. Again, this could be seen as a useful service. When people travelled into Jerusalem from the countryside or even travelling in from other countries, it wasn't going to be practical to bring their offering with them. But they could buy animals or drink or grain, whatever they needed to make their offering there near the temple. If you've travelled abroad, you will have come across something similar. If you want to visit a church in many places, you'll need to be dressed appropriately. And sometimes you'll find people outside selling scarves or shawls to cover ladies' shoulders. And many tourists are glad of this because it means they can carry on with their visit. But of course, there's also the opportunity for people to take advantage. And this happened in Jesus' day. Near festival times, the prices might go up as demand was very high. And people wouldn't have any choice but to pay what was being asked. And I'm sure the same things happen today near temples where people may want to bring fruit or flowers to offer to idols of various religions. I think our assumption when Jesus talks about the temple being a house of prayer, but being made a den of robbers, is that he either disapproves of businesses being there at all, or that the money changers and sellers of doves were overcharging and exploiting people's need for the right coin or animals for offering for sacrifice. But is that the whole story? Are there further clues in what Jesus says? Jesus quotes from Jeremiah chapter 7 and Isaiah 56. Well, we should be familiar with the verse from Isaiah 56, as it's written on the outside of our church building. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The chapter it comes from talks about how those who would have been excluded and called outsiders and excluded from God's presence will be included. The eunuch and the foreigner who live as God commands, who follow his ways, who choose to do what pleases God, will have a place in his temple and their offering will be acceptable. They're acceptable to God because their heart is right. They desire to please God and they obey him. In contrast, Jeremiah chapter seven tells us that God's own people were not keeping his commands. They weren't following his ways or choosing to do what pleases him. And yet they still thought that they could come into the temple, go through the motions of making offerings and be OK, be safe. But God says this to them in verses 9 to 11. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Is Jesus angry because he sees that people in the temple are just going through the motions? 
making the offerings and sacrifices the law demands, as if that is enough, as if there's no other demand on the rest of their life to choose to please God and obey him. Is Jesus angry because the religious leaders have added to the law, made it so complicated and burdensome that poor people and other marginalised people are being excluded? Or is Jesus angry because they have set up their businesses in the court of Gentiles, a place where anybody, not just Jewish people, could go to pray? As if these people are not welcome and do not matter. Well, I think Jesus' next action is very telling. Once he's driven away the money changers and the dove sellers, the blind and lame come to Jesus and he heals them. And the children praise God, recognising Jesus' acts as the acts of the Messiah, the Saviour. This is a sign, is it not, that Jesus is the fulfilment of those prophecies in Isaiah and Jeremiah, that those who would be excluded can be included, that those with clean hearts can see God, the children in simple innocence recognise and worship God, the people going through the motions with their complicated system of offerings and sacrifices, and the teachers of the law who have put that together, they have missed the point. Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. Jesus will be the perfect sacrifice by whom all people can be made clean, by whom all people can be welcomed into the house of God, into the very presence of God. Because when Jesus died, that curtain that separated the people from God at the Holy of Holies will be torn into. The way is made through Jesus to the Father. And all who believe are welcome. All who call on the name of the Lord can be included. All who seek him can be made whole by Jesus. For God doesn't dwell in one place, in a temple made by human hands, but God dwells in each believer by his Holy Spirit. And each one, a temple of the Holy Spirit, is being built together to honour and glorify God. So let's end with some challenging but beautiful words from 1 Peter 2, 1-6. to 